All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining. Welcome to the Art Studio Enterprise Community Meetup. I'm Rachel Dempsey. I'll be one of your hosts for today's R and Sports Analytics Meetup. Um, and I'm joined by my co-host today, Mitch Tanny. if you want to say hello to everyone as well. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, if you're joining here for the second time, uh, thank you. I'm playing the role of assistant MC today. So no presentation for me, but looking forward to the presentation later today from Michelle. Awesome. So if you've just joined now, feel free to introduce yourselves through the chat window and maybe put in where you're calling from and, and say hello. Um, but just to go through a, a brief agenda for today, we'll go through some introduc introductions, uh, presentation by Michelle, and then just some open Q&A and, and networking. And I just wanted to note that this recording will be shared um, and will be posted up to YouTube. So of course, feel free to jump in and, and ask questions live too, but we'll also have a Slido link if you wanna ask anything anonymously or if you don't wanna be as part of the, the recording. Uh, but for anyone who's just joining this group for the first time, this is a friendly and open meetup environment really for teams to just share the work that you're doing within your organizations or teach lessons, learn, network with each other, um, but, but really just to allow us all to learn from each other. So thank you all so much for making this a welcoming community. Um, if you do ever have suggestions or general feedback, please let me know. I'll share an anonymous Google form in the chat later as well, but you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn or Meetup uh, or just email me directly too. So as I mentioned, I'll share that Slido link in just a second here for any questions that you have during the talk. Um, but with that, I would love to introduce our speaker, Michelle Brandau. Uh, Michelle is a data analyst at FanDuel and will be presenting on an introduction to GitHub Actions. And so with that, I will stop my share, Michelle, and turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, so let me share. Uh, my screen. Okay, everybody, everyone can see it. Can you see it? Yep, it looks perfect. Um, so uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, GitHub Actions. Um, it's something that I started working probably a month ago uh, because uh, a project that I was working on the side. Um, and then uh, so the slogan, this is the slogan uh, for GitHub Actions, automate your workflow from idea to a production. And that's pretty much uh, what GitHub uh, does, uh, automates your uh, project. And uh, I was, uh, I've been working with a daily coach and um, I, uh, I'm working on creating a shiny app uh, for uh, that coach so it can use for, help, to help with the scouting. And, um, when I was working on the project, I I need to find a way to um, to able to scrape the data from the um, G League website um, uh, um, in an automatic automatic way, so I don't have to go every day and kind of do the scraping because uh, you know G League plays almost every day, uh, and then coaches. Once the game is over, uh, they quickly go into the next one. So I want to make sure the data is updated um, as soon as possible. So I found that GitHub Actions was was a good way uh, to do it. So I'm kind of just giving you a, a very a brief introduction of what GitHub Actions um, is and uh, how to start it. Um, so it's a tool from GitHub, of course. Uh, they can be used in a lot of different things. Uh, you can use it as a test. For example, if you have a package, uh, if you build a package and you, you did some small changes and you want, you want to test that out, if you, you didn't break anything, you can use uh, GitHub Actions um, to uh, um, to make sure you, you the package looks good. Um, you can deploy uh, your project with your GitHub Actions. Um, so it depends where's your goal. You can do you can do a, a lot of different things. Um, most of the GitHub action, I mean, most of the people use GitHub actions for uh, continuous integration. Uh, that's what is most used for. Um, you can use in a lot of different things. Uh, uh, you can use R, Python, uh, all, all uh, different language. Um, 
Um, but today, of course, I'm going to talk about uh, in R. Um, so before anything, that's where you start. Um, so you have to create a, a Git uh, folder um, workflow. So uh, you got to make sure that it's exactly uh, the this way. So you got to put that GitHub uh, slash workflows. And then you have to create the, the work, uh, the GitHub action, you got to create a, a YAML file. And this here, that's what it looks, will look like. I'll explain a little bit more um, as we go. Um, but definitely you got to make sure that it is exactly, you spell it exactly uh, like this, otherwise it won't work. Um, so uh, the GitHub for the most part is uh, six, uh, five steps. And um, depending on how complex it is, uh, you can have uh, more jobs, so we'll have a little more steps. But the first one is the event. And what is the event? The event is what, what is triggers your work workflow. And these two that I have here are the most common ones, I would say, but you can customize as, as much as you, as you want. Uh, GitHub um, does a great job with the documentation and tells you and gives you a lot of examples. So the first um, uh, trigger that you can do is by uh, push or the pull request. Um, so once you push, uh, the, it triggers the workflow and it will run um, the, the, your workflow uh, or your GitHub actions. Another way to do it is uh, creating a, cr a cron. And if you're not familiar with the cron, is um, is a way you can just timing um, your workflow. And this, this, this part is actually what made me to use um, GitHub Actions. So I wanna, um, I want run the script or uh, script the data every, uh, every day in the morning. So the coach wants to go there, uh, wants to go to the, to the Shiny app uh, as uh, updated data. And with this cron schedule, if you're not uh, familiar with the syntax, so the first one here is for the minutes. The second one here is for uh, is gonna tell you the hours, the third day of the month. The next one is uh, the month. And then the last one is the um, days of the week. If you, if you put the stars, it means that you'll run, you will run in this case every day of the month, it will run every day, uh, every month, and it will run every, every day of the week. 30 here because in the minutes that means it's going to run uh on a, on a minute uh 30 and then here the hours that means it's going to run in this case uh, at 5 a.m and 5 p.m so if you if you use this um trigger uh your uh, workflow will run every single day at 5 30 a.m and then uh 5 uh, 30 p.m and this is what I was uh, kind of looking for it, so I don't have to go and run uh, the scrape every single time, every single day. So the jobs, um, so in that, the jobs uh, is is what you gotta um, create to kind of is you gonna tell the Git of what you wanna uh, do. So. It can either be, you know, um, run a script or run a test or uh, labels. And then uh, each job runs uh, as a runner uh, and a little bit after. And then um, uh, each job also uh, as steps and actions. And um, uh, you have, you need to uh, give an ID to the job and, uh, and I'll explain a little bit why. And then uh, you, usually you can run multiple jobs um, depending on what you want. Uh, and also, also, you know, within the limit of GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions. The GitHub Actions is free, but uh, it has a certain limit, the jobs that you can run. Um, for the most part, jobs are, are independently, meaning that they run in the um, parallel but you can have an uh, option where they depend on each other. And if you look here in this example here, job, job you, you'll run job number one, and then you have job, job number two, but 
for job number two to run, job number one has to run successful. So given a practical example, for, uh, actually in my case, so I'm trying to scrape uh, data from the uh, G League website. So that's my job number one. And then the job, job number two would be deploying the Shiny app, for example. So to deploy the to the deploy the shiny app, um, I I've I I need to have the data scraped successfully first, and then job three here in this situation is kind of the same way. So job one and job two gotta run uh, successful, so with no errors for num for job number three to run. So what what are the runners? So the runners are. Uh, type of machines where your uh, job um, is uh, run on. So GitHub uh, does a good job at hosting uh, virtual environments and it pretty much covers all the uh, machines. So we have Macs, uh, Linux and Windows. And, but you can also do your own uh, uh, or create your own runner. Um, and then of course, I mean, it depends what you want. So for example, if you wanna um, check your, uh, package uh, that is gonna uh, influence what kind of um, um, runners do you, do you need. Um, steps are uh, also within the jobs. Um, so you with the steps, you can run commands, run the um, tasks or run actions. Um, again, those are in the limit as long as you, you stay with the user limits. And I, I'm gonna show you next a little bit of what I, uh, all these steps uh, with an example. And then actions, um, you can install a software environment or set up authentication um, or complete uh, other type of text. So let's, let me show you, let me stop sharing and show you uh, an example that I have here. So this is an example that I ran uh, this morning. So I have here the R file, the R file with the scrape from um, the NBA. So this is what I wanna hear. Let me show this part. So this is the data that I wanna scrape. Uh, these are all the um, T League uh, players from last year, regular season. I wanna look at um, the shooting percentage uh, for each area. So, uh, so this is the R script that I, that the code that I uh, uh, ran to get, to scrape there, and then kind of show you here. So I already have a, the, the, the um, folder with the workflow and this is the, uh, the email file. So, Kind of tell you uh, the steps that I went through here. So here's the name, just the name of your your um, action, and then here is the event part. So I'm saying here um, trigger the the action when I push uh, to the main branch, and then here is the job. Also, you got to give a name to the job because if you want to uh, have jobs depend on each other, you got to identify them. Um, and um, so this is the runner uh, that I met. I put Mac, uh, you could put in this case, uh, either one, honestly, um, because this is run on GitHub, so it doesn't really matter uh, because it's just scraping. And then uh, this part here, you always going to need this if you use R. This action here uh, is for um, GitHub check your repository. And then this action here is, tell, is telling you uh, the GitHub to install R. So this is gonna make sure that it's gonna check your uh, repository. And then also here that uh, this one that you, got, you make sure that you have R installed. Uh, the next step is make sure that you have the package that you need uh, installed as well. So you're gonna put uh, install you name it, install package. I mean, you could give it any name you want and then run, and then you're gonna install all the packages you need. For me, because it's very simple, you don't need a ton of package. This is probably the, the easiest way, um, but you you could um, 
create a different outside file where you put all the packages you need, they'll just run it. And then, so as of right now, I have, I have the trigger, um, I have the R installed, and I have, I told, I told the GitHub where to look at it um, for my repository of what I want to run. So, and next part is uh, to run the script. So here, I'm going to put name, I, I call in script, scrape, and then run. So I'm saying I'm going to put R script, and then that's the name of the R script that I want to run. So if you're going to go look here back, uh, that's the same name. So um, in the so in the in the uh, uh, scrape at, at the end here, I tell them to to write as the CSV file uh, and send it as you said here, send it to the data folder. So now let me go back here so to the to the GitHub. So I told it, I told it to, the, to run there, and this part here uh, is just telling me it just tell you to you know add the the the, the file to the data folder, um, and then this is also this is just default by GitHub. GitHub creates a, a token for you and also creates a, 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 a calls actions. So you sh you need to add this at the end uh, every time. Um, so I ran this, and if you want to look at it, so I ran this in the morning. So if you go here, actions. Um, so this we're running uh, this morning, and if you if you see the check sign, that means everything went through, and and not in the avenue. If you see a problem here, uh, you will have like a, a red cross. So if you click it here and you want to look at, at your um, uh, action here, so here it set up the job, runs and checks your repository. Here would um, make sure R is installed. And then the next one, you went there and installed the package. So you can see all uh, the package that uh, were installed. And then scrape, which is the name of my, um, and my uh, R file and everything went through with no problem. And um, the like, and the last one is just complete the job. So the way for me to check it, I came here, uh, test. So I will go data and then I have the file here uh, with all the data scripts. Um, so, but, uh, if you click on actions here, and then you create a new workflow, um, you can either, so this is our package, so uh, GitHub kind of uh, recommends you um, uh, a GitHub um, a workflow here. This one is for to, sh to check uh, with um, our, pack our package. If you want to look at uh, uh, what I uh, said in the beginning, so if you want, uh, double check if you're at you if the change that you made to your package uh, didn't uh, break anything. You can use this as um, as a workflow to, to kind of uh, check that. But you can also also create your own uh, a setup workflow. And um, so it, it, it gives you an um, an example. Another thing here, uh, you have the marketplace where it can give you um, different of um, actions that you can use. So like if I want to do shiny, shiny apps, I click it here and then let me actually full. And then it will tell you here the code to use for the shiny app. Uh, so this one will be another step or you create, you could create a new, a different job and uh, to deploy uh, a shiny app. Uh, so that's what I have for today. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Michelle. I, I see a few questions are coming in on the Slido right now. Mm -hmm. um, and one that I was curious about as well is like thinking about this information that you're pulling in at a high level, what information are the coaches then accessing in the Shiny app? 
Um, a lot of um, is, you know, four factors. Um, looking at uh, shooting percentage uh, by, um, by uh, location, um, looking at um, uh, efficiency, uh, team efficiency, player efficiency, look at uh, lineups. Um, those are the type of things they, they look at, they are looking for. Um, with, with the coach and I'm working on it uh, with it, um, it's, it's more kind of like put in the way where um, that coach can, you know, um, just go right away, understand what, what kind of things uh, uh, that coach needs to look at it and um and he's there for uh to kind of support um the scouting report thank you mm -hmm. i see richard asked a, a question about what are the most important packages that you use and i think this would be helpful to ask the whole audience as well if people want to share in the chat too uh for this specific uh project or just in general um, I think it might be in general, but Richard, feel free to jump in as well. Um, I mean, it depends what you want. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, we know tightly diverse is a well-known package that everybody uses. It's very handy. Um, it depends if you want to scrape, uh, if you want to um, um, do um, modeling. Um, so tidy, mo tidy models, for example. Um, I mean, I, I think it depends what is your goal and what you want to accomplish uh, with your project. And yeah, R Richard, do you want to? Did you want to jump in there or um, add any context to that question? Um, and it also may be helpful for the audience too to share a few helpful packages as well. And maybe we could compile a list of. Mm -hmm. helpful packages uh, for sports analytics. Um, another question, anonymous question is, um, do you have some resource recommendations for going more in depth on this topic? Uh, I mean, you just use GitHub documentation. Uh, I think they, it's very good. Um, probably that will be the first uh, step or the uh, where to go. Um, um, that's what I, I, I use for the most part, honestly. Thank you. And again, if anybody wants to ask questions live, feel free to as well. Otherwise, I'll go through some of the Slido mm -hmm. questions. Um, one of the anonymous ones uh, was, is there a Python equivalent of your code? Uh, um, the, the scrimpy part or actually the, the actions, the, so it, with, with GitHub, you can use Python as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that is the question, uh, the scraping of, I mean, I believe so. I'm not familiar with it, but I think, it, yeah, for sure. That is, that is a, a similar package where you can scrape from the IPA, API. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, Stefan, I see that you just asked a, a few questions in the Zoom chat, too, and one being, are there memory limits subject to the action? Um, and feel free to, to jump in as well, Stefan. Hi. So, um, reading from Switzerland. I have exactly this question because um, it seems it is a serverless um, service. Uh, GitHub action is about it. Is it true? So that if if you run your your scraping um, routines, then there must be a virtual machine where it's running on, or at least there must be a hardware uh, where it is performed. So it, I suppose. Yes, GitHub is like a, a virtual machine. That's what the runners are, uh, are for. So you can exactly. you can choose what virtual machine you want. But you can use you, you can use your own and customize your own as well. The question I have is if I would scrape uh, a little bit more of data that uh, as I've seen it now uh, and I have maybe um, in the memory 
uh, four gigs of, of, of data. Is it possible or not? For instance, I have tasks running in R which have 5.6 gigs um, usage. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I would say yes, um, but I could be wrong. I mean, yes, my, my example is, is very literal, so I had no, no issue. I haven't tried with the, with the uh, bigger data. Member. And the other someone questions? dropped. Huh? Uh, just, if I can just chime in here for a second, uh, someone dropped a link in the chat for the pricing for GitHub Actions, and there are storage limitations mm -hmm. associated huh. with that. So, I, yeah, make sure you take a look at that reference. Thanks GitHub so uh, Actions is free if it's a public repository. So, if it's public, you it, it should be free. Of course, with limitations, but. It, uh, those limitations are are pretty big. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I think David asked a question. Um, you said great method to automate data refreshes. Could you discuss other approaches to automating data refreshes? Um, and you said, for example, our studio server. I don't know if that's a question that you want to answer, Michelle, or I could ask Mitch as well. Yeah, maybe um, uh, Mitch probably will be a better resource for this one. <laughs> so on the, in terms of, can you ask the question once again, Rachel, I just want to make sure I understand what the context was there. Yeah, and David, feel free to jump in too. But I see it, um, the question was, this is a great method to automate data refreshes. Um, could we discuss a few other approaches to automating data refresh as well? Yeah, I'll... I'll approach that a little bit here from the from the professional product side of things. So on our professional products, we have those are server based products as well. And uh, if you're not familiar, RStudio Connect is essentially a deployment uh, host for all of your data science products. So in this particular example, one method of doing that would be to take your script, that script that uh, Michelle had written and drop that in as an R markdown document. You can then actually publish that R Markdown document to R Studio Connect, and there's a scheduling feature on R Studio Connect that would allow you to have that data refresh at different uh, different time iterations. So yes, there are other ways to uh, refresh data, and again, that's kind of more on on the professional side of uh, with R Studio products. But Connect would allow you to do that. And. Uh David, feel free to jump in if you have any follow-up question there too. I'm trying my best to have us all like pretend we're in a real room <laughs> right here, but I know it's very hard virtually. Um, another question is, it looks like for the Shiny example that you supplied GitHub with the environment variables for the Shiny credentials. Um, and someone just wanted to know, how do you actually do that? Uh, you, you have the in once you log in on your Chinese um, um, website. So if, if once you, you uh, is the shiny, uh, shiny app. Uh, okay, so, so that's on shiny apps I where you Yeah, share. and then you click on your app and then uh, it has a settings there where it shows you the details and one of those are those uh, credentials. Thank you. Um, and again, if that doesn't answer the question, feel free to clarify on, on Slido or in the Zoom chat too. Um, Pani, or apologies if I pronounce your name incorrectly, I saw you asked, what's a good way to learn GitHub Actions for beginners? Uh, honestly, just doing, I know, start a little and then build from there, uh, that's kind of, I. How I started. Um, I mean, that's that's always the best way. Michelle, if I can jump in here with a related mm -hmm. question, can you talk a little bit more about your motivation for doing this? And uh, I, I think that's one thing. And I know you said you had tried to, uh, you know, you wanted to automate this script, but can you talk a, a little bit more about resources that you potentially used to? Because I think that's probably one question that others on this call maybe considering is I have this, I may have a related problem mm -hmm. and this is a great resource, 
I'm sure you used others as you were putting this together. So can you talk maybe just a little bit about uh, some other resources that you may have used to just put some of these pieces in place? Because more often than not, I think it's a when you're trying to solve a problem such as this, it's I'm taking a little bit from this section, this resource, I'm taking a little bit from this section to kind of fit what I need done. Yeah, I, honestly, I I mean, I, I've been, um, I heard about GitHub Actions for a while and uh, um, I kind of started deciding to take a look um, when I had the problem. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I don't know much about the connector one, but I, you know, you have package where you could deploy uh, or refresh your, your R script uh, in your machine. But for me, I think the most important part was the optimization part where I didn't need to be on my computer to, to kind of uh, run the, the script. And uh, GitHub uh, Actions kind of did add all of that. So um, honestly, I didn't, I didn't go too far from it because it kind of add everything that I needed. Um, I'll I'll be honest. I haven't tried the 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 uh, deployment part of the uh, the shiny app. That's the next step for me. Um, so maybe um, you know with the shiny because it's a little more complex. Uh, I'll probably need a little more. Other, I'll need other resources. But I think for for the this part where it scrapes uh, to scrape the data, I think I mean it's it's very easy. Um, and, uh, uh, it, it does, it does the job for you. Sorry. I No, that that's helpful. Um, I'm also, I'm curious myself, like how that process went for you internally, like were people already using R or did you kind of have to explain, um, like what shiny is if, or thinking about sharing that with people or, or what was that process like? Um, yeah, well, the, the coaching, no, I didn't know much about Shiny. Uh, she kind of, the coach kind of came at me with a promise and say like, listen, I, I need something where I, um, it can make my life a little easier in terms of, uh, during the season with the scouting, instead of just going to the G League website and try to find all the stats, um, that the coach need. Um, and I kind of honest was my side. I kind of suggest they, I can probably create a, an app that looks like a website that have all the information that you need right, right there. And you don't need to go to 20 pages to, to look for the information, um, that you need that, uh, for that specific game, because even sometimes for, a, um, you know, if it's every game is different so they might need information for one or some information for one game and another type of information for another and then uh, um and instead of being 20 pages is is 30 pages so for that coach it was more i how i can make my life easier um during the season because it's already uh, crazy with the amount of games they have with the amount of practice and uh, all the responsibilities they have um and I, uh, you know, if I uh, save an hour a day, that's 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 huge. So they didn't know, uh, or they could you know what was. Is still not know honestly, well, which is fine. Uh, so you know, as long their coach knows how to navigate with the with the shiny app, uh, it's totally fine with me. Uh, we kind of talk um, with each other, see the best ways to kind of. Um, how you display better, how you, um, what kind of things they want to, when a certain order they want it. Um, so I personally. Oh, did we lose Michelle for a second? <laughs> While Michelle's dialing back in, I think she her internet dropped for a second, but I'm curious if other people on the call are using are for that purpose as well um, with scouting. I'm going to force somebody to talk to me at some point here. Rachel, I can kind of chime in here Yeah, a, a little bit. I, I think just as Michelle gets set back up again, I, I think it's important for others here on the call to, if you're just getting started and you're not sure 
hey, how do I how do I do something? Uh, I, I think the way that Michelle described her process and her the kind of the motivation behind it is that there was you, you're solving a very specific problem for another member in your organization, and it can be as simple as just aggregate aggregating data from different locations and. Uh, my recommendation based on my experiences is similar to what Michelle has kind of described here is that uh, try to find small victories uh, rather than trying to maybe plan something out for, hey, this is going to be a 12 month, 18 month project. Like the timelines with a lot of sports organizations are very condensed uh, because of the season, because of the volume of games or whatever the case may be. So try to focus on small victories, uh, especially as you're getting started, just to help uh, create more efficient processes, streamline workflows for other members in your organization. And often that then leads to larger opportunities, bigger scale type projects, uh, especially as you're getting started. So I think the way that Michelle described that is uh, in the motivation for her project saying, hey, someone needed, uh, rather than going to 20 different websites, we were trying to just ag create a centralized resource for data. And I, I think that's a, a really uh, really good approach to solving a problem for an organization. And it looks like Michelle is on, so I will turn it back over to her. Sorry, my internet has been bad. <laughs> no problem. No Michelle, way. I was just saying that just as we were, as you were trying to get back connected again, just uh, I commended you for your approach in terms of solving a problem within your organization and using just data aggregation as one step to potentially, and how that may potentially lead to future conversations. And maybe you can talk a little bit about this in terms of what is, what's transpired since you've put this in place. Has that led to additional conversations? Has that led to potential uh, more interactions with your coaching staff? Well, uh, it's kind of st still a, a, a building process. Uh, the goal is to be ready to go uh, before the season. Um, uh this is a side project, so uh, I'm not directly working for the organization. Honestly, I'm just working with a specific coach. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm hoping kind of you know help from 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 here in terms of what they need, uh, uh, what the things they look uh, for, and kind of makes their their life easier. Um, that's 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 the goal. And then it's kind of, we'll see, I mean, how, how the season goes and the goal is, is kind of for the coach to test that out and see if it helps, if it doesn't help, what, what helped the most, what things uh, we could improve um, and then, and then kind of go from there. What did that communication process look like in like from the beginning? Like I know they, the coach said, Oh, I have this problem that I need you to help me solve, but did they kind of have an idea of what they wanted it to look like or did you like draw it out or? Um, it, it was kind of bold. Uh, so they did have an idea. I kind of suggest um, a few things or show uh, a few things out how we could look like um, given examples, uh, example uh, uh, from college um, kind of, be a mix of the um, the 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 G League website um, and uh, it kind of build it you know together in the sense that right, I I made this change can you look it up how did you like it do you want this way do you want that way uh, one, one time the coach I said told me that yeah I I prefer to have this table up top so kind of work together and see um, what things um, you know they like better what things they prefer and um and try to to please them as as much as possible insist because they they are the ones they're going to work with it they are the ones they're going to use it so uh the easier is for them um the more they're going to use it and that, that's kind of the goal thank you i see there's one last question in the slido chat and then i'm going to double check the zoom chat too but it says um, do you also use or have you used docker if so are there any like major usage or feature differences you've noticed uh i i haven't used it i know you can use docker with github uh actions with github actions uh, uh 
I don't know much about it. It's something I've, I've heard of it, uh, but it, it's, it's definitely something that I, I look forward to, to kind of learn a little bit more. Definitely. Thank you so much, Michelle. And I'm Thank just you. like scrolling through a bit in the, the chat and I see, Bill, you have um, some perspective that you've just shared there as well. And I'm wondering if you'd want to jump in live and, and chat about that. Yeah. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yep, I can. Yeah. No, I, I was just just adding to. I think there was just a question around. You know, and, and I think in the sports world in particular, but I think you also find this in different organizations. Um, you know, where time is of the essence um, for for leaders, managers, coaches, whatever it happens to be. Um, and I've, I've seen this just within sports itself. There's so much that people are doing manually. Um, trying to prep, trying to to look at how you know they can improve their players. Um, and especially right now, data is not something that they're trying to get their hands on. They're flooded with it. Um, and they spend so much time trying to corral the data and just get it into a, a form that makes sense to them. And that's, you know, they, they kind of develop their own processes to say, hey, this is how I'm going to evaluate a player, track how they're doing, find where their, their weak spot is, which to improve on. And it takes them so much time to manually get the, date, the data into the shape that, that they like to view it in. Um, so just in terms of, you know, if you're working with people or trying to almost find a gateway for them to, you know, take more advantage of, of analytical work, uh, I do think that anything you can do to save people time, even if it seems simple, doesn't even have to involve any kind of fancy modeling whatsoever, but just mm -hmm. being able to save them time and get them something that's automated and, and, you know, they can have something in, you know, an hour versus two days that would take them to do themselves. Um, I think that's usually something that makes folks very receptive to well, what else can you do, right? Let, let, me, let me tell you about this other thing, this other idea I have, this other problem I have. Um, and that, that can usually be a pretty good gateway into, into you know, partnering with them more and getting them to open up and, and have you know, more asks of this kind of work. Mm -hmm. That's a, a great point. Thank you so much. And I'd love to have other people jump in as well if, if you have things to share. Um, trying our best to <laughs> pretend we're all sitting around in like a conference room or at a meetup. Something I'd like to ask the whole audience is, are there specific resources that have been really helpful for you or um, in particular around sports analytics, like either for finding certain packages or learning how to do certain tasks? Hi. Well, for me, can you hear me? Hey, David. Yes, you're a little quiet, but I can hear you. What's that? There you go. I can hear you. So for me, um, not specifically related to uh, sports, but that's still product analytics work, right? And some of that has been really helpful in projects has, has been um, the R Studio project. Uh, management, how do you call it? Management ability, sort of to be able to go from project to project, right? Mm -hmm. from, yeah, right. So usually, um, one very very big um, addition that has done for me is project management, right? From the beginning of a project, it looks very easy to skip some of those things, right? Building a, a correct structure in our studio, right? But as the project skills Maneuvering through those phrases becomes really important and it's been particularly helpful in that. Yeah. Yep. Thank Definitely. Thank you. Um, Brian, I, I see you asked a, a question just in the Zoom chat here, and a few other people are sharing a few helpful links of uh, resources. But Brian asked any advice for someone who wants to get into sports analytics, like volunteering to help a simple project? Um, that Bill mentioned earlier, or how to network with coaches. Michelle, do you have any advice? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Honestly, you know, have something ready to show and then contact the coaches is the best way. Um, you know, uh, they want, if if they need help or if they, if you come up with something they're going to help them, they're going to, they're going to hear you. So, um, you know, try, um, and I know it's hard sometimes, uh, if you're not in the field, but try to reach out to coaches 
and kind of show them, hey, this is what I build. Um, are you interested? Uh, I think I could help you. Some, some, something in those lines. Um, I think that would be probably the best way to go about it. Yeah. And you, oh, I was just curious if Michelle, you just reach out to them over email or, or LinkedIn or, or how do you? Well, uh, this one I was, I knew the coaches, so I kind of, uh, you know, I play basketball overseas. Um, so it kind of opens up a little bit the doors for me. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I've been reached out to coaches before uh, 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 for those, for the same reasons. So I think kind of build your network, show that you can do things that help them. And uh, mm -hmm. they, they, they will, they are willing to, to kind of work with you. I mean, if you go for NBA, of course, probably it's a little harder because they have all the resources, but maybe if you go for low levels like college or even G League, I mean, G League, um, they, they have some resources, but it's not as like NBA, for example. So yeah, definitely mm -hmm. professional sports or the major uh, sports are a little, are, is a little harder because they do have the resources. But if you want to start in the sports, maybe try um, low levels, college, basketball, football, um, even football. Now they have uh, mid major, uh, the big, ma uh, but try mid majors, for example, they probably don't have those resources for football, for college football, for example. Um, so yeah, definitely have something ready to show and, um, and contact our uh, network as much as you, mm -hmm. as you, you can. I don't know if Michelle. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was going to say, Michelle, your example here today about that was more of a workflow related, uh, example. And it was because you'd had that engagement with a coach and mm -hmm. had a conversation about like, Hey, we need to solve this very specific problem. What I would add to that is for someone who may be completely outside of sports, looking to get into sports, one thing that captures the attention of people, of coaches, personnel, people, just front offices is winning. <laughs> so if you can, if you have a study, you have analysis that says, Hey, this increases the likelihood of a win by X percent or overall wins increases by uh, whatever the number is, that's going to capture the attention more often than not of someone that's working for a team, working for an organization, because uh, especially at the highest levels of sport, it really comes down to one thing and that's winning. And so if you can, if you have analysis that shows that uh, in addition to the workflow uh, discussion, which again, I think maybe sometimes might be a little more nuanced uh, as you're working within an organization or in Michelle's example, you have a specific connection to someone and you've had that uh, back and forth, but winning <laughs> is uh, the ultimate uh, objective at the, you know, at the highest level. So if you have analysis that says, Hey, this is going to help, this is going to help your organization win. Uh, that could be another uh, entry point for some of you who are maybe outside of sports looking to get into sports. For sure. Thank you, Mitch. Um, I, I did also notice that, Oh, Brian, I see you unmuted. So I'm going to take that as you raising your hand. Sure. Um, Mitch, that's a, that's a great point. And actually, it's a universal point. Um, when I worked in marketing research and consulting, we had our, our intellectual property. We sold a ton of business because we could show that a, a company's ROA was correlated with a linear regression at a, at a highly statistical level with these benchmarks. And I, I honestly, that was a piece that sold everything, just like winning. So this was you know, for, to your traditional business person, you increase your shareholder ROA or your ROE, you're going to make people happy. They're going to listen to you. And, you know, we have the statistics and the, and the regression that showed it, um, you know, each amount of dollar that they did this or did that was an incremental gain. Um, and it speaks volumes, you know, and, and as you said, with sports, it's about winning. So, you know, for people wanting to get anything, find the metric that's most important. It's not the same for every industry. Um, but that's, what's going to get people to listen to you. That's a great point, Brian. Um, and speaking of the metrics that are most important, I see Simon, you asked, what are the typical asks for analytics teams, um, from coaching staffs in basketball? So similar to the NFL fourth down decision problem. Uh, I 
do not have an experience to work with the teams. Uh, so, I mean, the only thing that I was asked is just kind of build this app. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm sure uh, coaches ask similar questions for basketball. So instead of the fourth down is if you should foul at the end uh, of the fourth quarter when you up by one, for example, um, or up by, uh, yeah, up by one, up by up by two. So um, I think it would be the same uh, uh, type of resource, kind of think about uh, problems that you use or um, situations, situations you see in basketball and and, uh, and look at what would be the best strategy. Um, player develop, I think, is a, a big thing coming up too. It's like how, what kind of metrics or what kind of things they look, can look at it to, to improve players. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if uh, Mitch has some input on this. Um, I personally never worked with for an organization. Um, I was within, I played, but at that time, or the resources were not as much. So we didn't have any um, uh, analytical team in our, so our coach didn't use any. Uh, but I don't know if Mitch has uh, um, any input on that. I just dropped a couple of links into the chat of a few follows uh, that I'd recommend on Twitter. So the first is Ben Falk. Ben used to work for the uh, Trailblazers and then the 76ers. Uh, I know Ben personally. I think he's one of the smartest people I've ever met. So it's a plug for him and his work. He has a website called Cleaning the Glass. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend it for those of you that are interested in just learning more about basketball analytics. Uh, he provides just a, a unique perspective on how data can be used in basketball. And then also I uh, added Seth Partnow or Partnoy, I may be mispronouncing his last name, but uh, Seth is, uh, has experienced both in basketball. He worked for the Milwaukee Bucks. He's also written for The Athletic. And I think most recently he's actually working with uh, StatsBomb. Um, so again, just unique perspective uh, coming from a lot of different angles, uh, talking about analytics and sport and specifically in basketball. And Seth, if you hear this, I, if I butchered your last name, I apologize. <laughs> Thanks, Mitch. Um, one other conversation I see happening in the chat, and I just wanted to dive into it if anyone wants to add anything. Um, I see, Luke, you were asking around, um, or you're saying people are running this type of data for DFS, which I learned today is daily fantasy sports. Um, and props as soon as prices are revealed, time is of the essence. The sooner you can organize data, you find value. Um, Luke, do you want to speak to that at all or anyone want to jump in on that conversation? Is that, um, I know today you're, presentation Michelle is more so on like a side project and working with this this team um, but I'm curious is that something that you work with today at FanDuel or or what is that work uh, like? yeah I do work with the uh, daily fantasy um, so uh, yeah I mean you can use uh, this type of data to, or uh, to kind of predict performance uh, to see the value of um that player, specific player for the Delhi Fantasy, um, uh, is definitely a way to to look at it and kind of have a, the advantage. Um, you, I mean, you, for sure, yeah. Uh, Saif, I, I see you raised your hand. Did you want to add anything? No, as a question, and not specifically for this one. This is a great session. You know, I really enjoyed it, and I took all the notes that people have put onto the uh, you know, chat links. Um, so hopefully I can follow some of these and start educating myself a bit more. Um, awesome. What I'm keen on is that would we be able to see something similar uh, as a, a next session or in next few months, uh, a talk specifically upon, um, you know, how to analyze, um, uh, you know, cyclist performance, performance, you know, like the professional cyclist performance um, is, is that something that we could look at? Definitely, if we can find someone who wants to, <laughs> to speak about it. Um, 
for sure. If we can uh, maybe do yeah, a little so bit I'm, of. Yeah, uh, so I'm on the. I'm on the. You know, I'm I'm keen on that particular sports. I'm also keen on R, but I've not reached to that stage that I can do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just trying to bridge that gap, basically. That how can I actually start analyzing some of the, you know, data because. Uh, Uh, cycling is a, a heavily data intensive um, sports nothing uh, gets as competitive as you know um, cycling and extracting data in real time and then kind of uh, making some um, quick decisions based on the real time data and i was just wondering if we could get some example um, using our um, you know if somebody is able to bring that to life then that'll be fantastic Definitely. Yeah. And in another good place that, and I just wanted to mention this before we all go is um, we did start a, a channel on the R for data science online learning community dedicated to sports analytics. Um, so that could be a great place to ask that question too, and try and, and connect, just connect with different people there. Uh, um, is that gonna... group available on the, on the LinkedIn? Yeah. I'm just going to put it in the chat right now, how you join. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so it's r4ds.io slash join. Um, and then once you're as part of that group, you can join right away. There's a, a channel that's just called Sports Analytics. And so it's, I'm just going to type the channel name as well. Um, but it's also a great place for us all to, to follow up with other questions. And if we have resources or packages we want to share, I can go through this chat and pull the list as well. I'm in there too. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, and then one other thing about the next meetup too, um, so that you know what to expect for the future. I just posted a placeholder invite for Wednesday, November 10th. Uh, the same time, so 12 Eastern time. Uh, Tom Bliss is going to be presenting on the NFL Big Data Bowl. So if anyone's interested in that, would love to have you there as well. Before we go, I just want to open up to see if there are any other last questions that you want to ask Michelle. Try and wait a few more seconds here. <laughs> thank, thank you all so much for joining. I put into the chat right now, if you ever have any suggestions or general feedback on the meetup, there's a Google form there where you can include some feedback. Um, would love to have you all join us speakers in the future too. So feel free to reach out to me and meetup or LinkedIn or email me directly. Uh, but just wanna say thank you so much to Michelle for speaking, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting. Thank everyone to, to show up. And the next one I saw just someone just asked in the chat is November 10th at 12 Eastern time. Um, and I'll announce that on the meetup site and then make a LinkedIn event for it too. But thank you all for joining and have a great rest of the day.